Hey guys, Rebecca here, owner of Holy Rustic DIY Crafts, and today we are going to do a love paint and string um, on a piece of wood board. So this is part of um, a fun event, the Creative Hearts uh, Hearts and Arts, which um, is a combination of different creatives all over the country, and we're crafting all day. So make sure if you haven't already join that group and you will have access to all of today's crafts has anybody made anything so far lots of cute projects so one of the things that um hopefully you were able to do in advance is nail your heart so we tried to um do the nailing in advance because nobody wants to hear all that hammering right during our lives so try to if you didn't, it's no big deal, okay? This is gonna be here for you to, um, this is gonna be here for you to rewatch later, okay? So, let me know if you're here. Let me know if you are planning on making this. Hey, Sharon, how are you? Um, and we will, I'm gonna give you several different options for this, okay? So when we give you our templates, and um, normally we give you the option to um, do all of it in paint or do all of it in string or um, half and half. So let me make sure we are in the group here. Let's see. All right, let me know if you're making this. All right, are we in the Coast to Coast group? All right, so I'm going to um, just do the heart today, and then I'm going to paint the letters. So let me go ahead and show you how to use the tracer. So yours looks a little bit different because this is um, one that I have used over and over again to do all string. Um, if you have not already uh, nailed your board, then let me... Hold on one second. If you haven't already nailed your board, um, then you can, as you can see, I poke holes first, okay? So before I nail, I like to poke holes so we don't push paper into the wood. If you already nailed it, it's no big deal. But in the future, with the string art templates, if you go around everywhere, we have a dot and just poke a hole with a nail or a pin. That's gonna prevent the paper from getting stuck under the um, nails. So let me know if you have already nailed your board, if you're ready to go, um, or if you're just painting the whole thing, or if you're doing string art for the whole thing. So you have options here, all right? Now, I'm gonna use tracing paper to get, hey Chris, oh good, have you done string art before? Um, I'm going to cut my template, maybe, if I can find my scissors. I have like a thousand pairs of scissors and can't ever find them. Um, I have tracing paper that I'm gonna to use to transfer the letters onto my wood. If you do not have transfer paper, you can always use chalk, okay? So um, I usually teach both ways for people that don't have transfer paper. Hey Jamie, stained your board, need to get nails, gotcha. You can go ahead and paint with us though if you're gonna paint some of the letters. All right, awesome. String art is my favorite. That's okay, Sharon, you can just watch. Um, so that's how Holy Rustic got started, is a string art discovery that became a love. So I love string art. It, um, it's what got us started and what we've ventured into all kinds of woodcrafts, but string art will always be my first love and my favorite. So. I have gone ahead and put the tracing paper under the template and I'm gonna grab a pen. You can use a pencil if you want. I just find it easier to be able to see the letters when I use a pen. And again, your template just has lines, which I probably should have printed and done because it probably will not come out straight. Um, and I'm just tracing. So I'm just taking my pen and tracing that over top of that tracing paper and that should transfer the letter over to my wood. And we're gonna check and see in a minute. Has anyone ever done string art before? 
Okay, so see, um, it's very faint, but I can see it. That's why I use a pen. I think it shows up a little bit darker. Um, if you have chalk and no tracing paper, just take your chalk and rub it on the back of the template, lay it flat on your board, trace over it, and it'll leave a little line of chalk dust where you can see the letters. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the V. Um, we are going to go ahead and start with the paint. So I'm going to um, get the base coat on all the letters, and then while that's drying, I'm going to do the string, and then we'll go back and finish the detail on the letters. And I think that I'm going to mix it up from the example a little bit, because I like to um, switch things up. So I, I originally did red, but I'm really thinking about doing a pink heart. So I have these two strings. Which one do you think we should do? Should we do pink or red for the string art heart? I don't know, I'm feeling the bright pink today. I don't know why. Hopefully y'all are enjoying this fun day of crafting. It's um, it's perfect because there's snow on the ground here. Well, not quite as much as there was, but it has been, well, we got basically our first snow yesterday because they keep telling us we're getting snow and we never do, but we did get snow last night. So um, it's cold and I am not going out. <laughs> So, hey Amy, how are you? I th I'm thinking pink too, and then I'll just alternate the red and, um, I think so too, Sharon. I'm feeling the pink. So I think what I'm gonna do is match some pink paint. That's not it. I think this one is pretty close, and I'll do those two colors, and then I'll uh, alternate the red on the L and the E. So, all right, let me make sure all right, everything is transferred now. So now I have this uh, outline of my letters on the wood. And this stain is darker than the one that I used in the example. Um, so it's a little bit harder to see, but it's okay. Yes, hey Karen, I agree. Staying inside and creating is the best. Snow days where you don't have to get out is the best. are the best days to pick up a paintbrush or a hammer and nails, whatever you want to do. All right, so I think we're going with pink, right? We decided on pink string. Now, I've already nailed these in about halfway. So when you're doing string art, you wanna make sure that there is no wiggle room. So if you can take these nails when you're done and move them at all, they're not in far enough. So hammer them in a little bit farther, okay? All right, so if this is gonna be pink, I'm going to do uh, my V in Dragon Fruit by Deco Art, and then I'm going to do my L and my E, I think in Bright Red, also by Deco Art, which happens to be my favorite paint. So I guess I am kind of a paint snob, as um, Erica said earlier. <laughs> I have a, I'm partial to Deco Art, especially Americana. It's my fave. Um, and I'm also going to be using angled brushes like uh, Melanie did. They are my favorite, especially for doing these letters because they have that point on the brush. All right, where are y'all from? Where's everybody from? Hey, Elizabeth. Glad you're here, and I'm so happy to hear that you love our stuff. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and do a quick coat of paint on the letters that we just traced. So see this angle brush is perfect for just putting that point right up against that traced line. And then um, once we get this base coat, we're gonna let this dry. And then we're going to do the string real quick. And then we'll put details on the, um, on the letters. Oh, Florida, is it warm? You know, we all um, we all think of y'all in sunny weather and sunshine all the time. <laughs> so, um, what part of Florida are you from? Tennessee. What part of Tennessee are you from? I have family in Nashville, outside of Nashville, and I visit there frequently. So, love Tennessee. Oh, Michigan. Whew, way too cold for me. I cannot go north. Indiana is about as, southern Indiana is about as far 
north as I'm ever willing to go because <laughs> I in the in the winter because I'm not a fan uh, of the cold weather so I grew up in southern Alabama where it was warm all the time and I think I only saw snow when I visited family up here in Louisville Kentucky <laughs> so, and moving here was definitely a shock Okay, let's see. Where else? It's going so fast. Okay, New York. Awesome. Yeah, it's probably really cold up there, too. Lots of snow, I'm sure. Uh, St. George, Utah. Wow, we have people from everywhere. I love that. That's so fun. That's one of the things I love about this um, collaborative group is that we are able to come together from all over the country and craft. So, awesome. Hey, Allison. Georgia. Georgia Peaches. Yum love peaches Georgia peaches fresh Georgia peaches are the best like I said I grew up in southern Alabama so I have had my share of fresh Georgia peaches <laughs> like Lymphora okay I've heard of that way warmer yes I'm sure it is definitely way warmer than it is here <laughs> so very very cold we've had super cold tips but like I said this is the first snow that we've had and I was kind of happy to see it which I really never thought I would say those words but um, since I don't have to get out in it it's pretty to look at from a from a window while I have my heat on you know as I have two space heaters blowing on me <laughs> I am very cold natured um, so I've pretty much always got heat on me Y'all, I think our little studio cat is about to say hi. In fact, he's about to walk through my paint. So, um, let me. <laughs> this is Rumple. He is our little stray that we adopted and, and took in. He lives in the studio and he thinks he needs to be in the paint all the time. So, I'm just going to move him out of the way. <laughs> I saw him coming. Um, Shelbyville. Okay. All right. I don't think I've heard of that. My family lives in the um, Mount Juliet area. Um, like Hermitage very nice down there I love it hi Emily Missouri probably called there too right I think Florida is probably the warmest I think um you have the warmest weather today all right so I did that one in pink and I'm gonna do the pink string on the heart so now I'm gonna go ahead and paint the um, other two letters in red and then in the example we did polka dots stripes and something else oh like little dashes like a, a little outline of dashes whoops I dipped right back in the pink um so I'm just gonna paint right over that and really um, because I have this dark stain I'm not sure how this red is gonna show up and um, sometimes with red I like to put a layer of um, like light gray underneath and it does help with the translucency of the red not bad today. You're in for snow and cold this week, huh? Yeah, lots of snow going around. Guess that's part of winter, but we we haven't got like a really, really good snowed in snow and it seems like a long time. I can't really remember the last time we, we did. Hi, South Carolina. Awesome. Um Shelbyville has the walking horse celebration. Okay, what's the walking horse celebration? Because I live like right outside of Louisville, Kentucky. So we're in Indiana, but we're just over the bridge from Louisville, Kentucky. So what I know about horses is racing. So we have um, obviously the Kentucky Derby, which is a lot of fun to go to, but you'll have to explain the walking horse celebration to me. I'm not familiar with that. Sounds interesting. We're also super close to Lexington which is a big horse area so this red is probably going to need a second coat because i did not do any um priming underneath of it but that's okay all right south carolina what's the weather like there we literally have people from coast to coast isn't that cool it is the creatives coast to coast that is what it's called for a reason and it's just amazing that the technology we have today can bring us all together to craft 
Is anyone making this today with me? All right, so we have pink and red. Um, one more letter, I'm gonna go ahead and do the L in red. We actually, um, so this is, we have a whole membership based on this and the reason is that, like I said, I started with string art, I love it. <laughs> 37 and sunny well the 37 isn't that great but the sunny's nice right we do have sunshine today so the snow from last night is melting pretty quickly but I'm still not going out there it's cold <laughs> awesome hey Dawn yeah I saw y'all were um making some of the other projects too I, I can't wait to start seeing all the posts of the finished stuff that y'all have made today. This is so fun, I love these craft days. A Tennessee walking horse. Okay, that's awesome. Very cool. Man, my kids would love to have horses, but I do not want the responsibility. I love them, they're beautiful, but man, I, I hear they're a lot of work, right? Lots of work. We already have a, a mini farm around here. We do. We breed sheep. And we have lots of chickens. So sheep and chickens is why I don't think we need horses. <laughs> we are very, very busy. Not to mention all our dogs and cats and bunnies. So we have what I would call a hobby farm. So when we're not... Um, crafting which for me is pretty much 90% of my life um we're messing on the on the farm with the animals so that's kind of my hubby's my hubby's thing all right so we have a base coat on these letters and now we can um switch over to the string okay. so while that's drying I'll start the string and then I'm just gonna I might um, switch over and do like a second coat kind of before we're done with the string so that we're ready for the details and I think that, um, so we could do lots of different things. I can show you how to do cheetah prints. We could do polka dots, stripes, dashes. Um, so let me know what designs you think we should do on our letters. Time to get some llamas. Ooh. I think that he would be fine with any animal I brought up. He's all about the farm animals. <laughs> but um, I just don't feel like I need llamas. <laughs> Do you have llamas? I don't know about having llamas. I really don't know much about them. Aren't they the ones that, don't they spit though? I feel like they spit. Or is that camels? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything about them. Was the alpacas have the, the good, um, do they call it wool? See, I'm ignorant to this. I know sheep, I know chickens, and I know some cows, but that's it. All right, so what we're gonna do with our string and you can start on any nail so it doesn't have to be um this bottom one i just think it's easier to start on one end so it's totally up to you and what i've done is tied a double knot so double knot here onto this bottom nail <clears throat> and this is crochet thread which um, we've tried all different kinds and this is my favorite to use and what we're going to do as soon as we tie this double knot <laughs> is um, put a little bit of super glue right on the knot. So just a tiny bit. You don't want to drip it all over your board and you're not gluing your string to anything in particular. You're just getting a little glue on the knot so that once you start yanking the string and pulling it super tight, your knot does not come unraveled, okay? Because that's pretty annoying when you're stringing and then your knot um, unravels. So we just let that little super glue dry a little bit or not if you're like me you just glue all your scissors together um, because patience is not a virtue that I inherited um, I'm gonna cut off that little tail and I always do it before I start stringing <laughs> because I've seen people cut their actual string instead of the tail and that also makes for a bad day in crafting so I have heard that llamas make really good watchdogs we were um, touring a farm one time and they were telling us that and I had no idea it was crazy. So yeah, I've, I have heard that about llamas. They only spit when provo provoked. Okay, all right, so alpacas, 
for wool. So I wasn't that far off, right? Um, I did think llamas and spit were related and alpacas and wool. So very cool. Oh, your son goes to Derby every year. Horse show, they prance and strut, have judges. Cool. 10 day celebration. Oh goodness. That's, that's cool. I have not heard of that. I'll have to look into it. Oh, thank you, Karen. I love wood, obviously. Um, and yes, every piece of wood is different. I think that's one reason I like it. It's just unique. Um, all right, I'm going to show you how to do this, okay? What we're going to do, there's no rhyme or reason to this, but the, the important thing is that you keep the shape that you're stringing. So what I'm going to do first, just to show you, is I'm going to take this string and I'm going to wrap it around the heart. So basically, I have created a border for my heart. So you know with this border that this is the shape you need to stay inside, all right? So right now it looks like a heart. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start stringing by wrapping my string around these nails. You want to keep it pretty tight or it'll pop off. And it may take a minute to get the hang of it, all right? But you're going to go all different directions. So see, I've gone up and down, side to side, back and forth. And basically what you're doing is filling in gaps as you go, okay? Hi, Sherry. How are you? Um, we are going to keep doing this until we get it the way we like it, all right? So we're wrapping up and down, side to side, filling in the gaps. So even though it's super random, it is a little bit strategic, okay? And I have this upside down so I don't get my hands in my paint, just so you know. It is upside down. Um, and I'm going to show you real quick what happens when you don't stay inside your border. All right, so let's say I come up here and I jump this little area to the other side and I just keep stringing. Is that going to look like a heart when I'm done? <laughs> no. I've lost the shape by going inside at this little area here that I had bordered. So watch for the heart. That's really the only place you need to watch is right here. So if you cross that and you start to lose the look of that heart, you want to back it up, take it out of that little area. <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. Thank you. Yes, it's so fun. So be careful because it's addicting once you start string art. <laughs> Uh, some it seems like people either love it or hate it um even when i first started like the first design or two that i did i was like this is a lot harder than i thought i don't really like it like i thought i would um but i just stuck it out and eventually i mean within a few designs i was like totally hooked so thank you sharon um so again i'm just filling in these little areas Anywhere there's a gap, you're using all of your nails and just wrapping around, keeping it tight. And here's the thing. Um, everybody has different preferences and creativity, right? So there is no right or wrong here. You can use a little bit of string or you can use a whole lot of string. So whatever you like. Some people like it super thin and some people like me tend to do a little bit of a fuller um string so totally up to you thank you sharon yeah it's lots of fun string art is so fun especially paired with paint so i kind of get the both of uh, the book what am i trying to say the best of both worlds that's it and um, because i do combine a lot of painting with string art all right so i'm going to let that sit just a minute while i do uh for the sake of time i'm going to go ahead and do a second coat let this sit. What do you think? Does it need more string? Do y'all like the um, lighter look or do you like the fuller look? Everybody's different. So some people like it super um, see-through where you can see all the wood underneath. Hey, Melanie. No problem. Yes, you have to try it. It's so fun. Are you doing it, Melanie? I thought you said you were doing some of the projects today. Melanie just painted those awesome hearts that I am going to sit down at some point and do because they are so cute. And I love a messy painting like that because even when I'm trying not to be messy, I'm messy. So any kind of messy painting is perfect for me. 
Hey, Elizabeth. Yeah, thank you. Y'all definitely have to try it. String art is so fun. And we do um, so many other wood crafts these days that I just don't um, do near as much string art as I used to do, which is why I love events like this and our membership because that's where I get my string art fixes. So, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do second coat on this E. Speaking of which, did we decide on designs? Do we need to do cheetah? Does, do you, does anybody like the cheetah print? We did a class earlier this week with cheetah print and so now it's on my mind. I think it's fun. <laughs> oh, Sharon, that's so sweet. Thank you. That's really nice. We work hard on our kits and I just love and putting them together and getting them out to you all and I really love seeing them finished when you get done <laughs> that's okay Melanie I get it um I totally get that I'm the same way if Amazon doesn't get it to me I don't have it <laughs> I don't get out to the stores very often most of my stuff is Amazon I'm pretty sure that all the Amazon drivers are very familiar with us. <laughs> all right. So again, you can just paint this design if you want. You do not have to do string or you can do all the letters in string. We did set up the template where you can do all the letters if you want to. <laughs> yeah. I feel you. We're in the same boat there, Melanie. Okay, one more coat here. I'll go back and finish the string, which I think needs more string, but what do y'all think about that? More string? Do you like do you like the full string look or do you like the um lighter string like it is now? So we're almost done with these base colors. This is like a tried and true design here. So this is one of the first ones that I did um, when we started the studio. We did this as an in-person class. It was one of our first classes that we did. It was packed. And of course this was all, you know, pre-craziness that we're in now. But um, we did a Galentine's party at a local um, park venue and it was so much fun. So this is still one of my favorite designs. Yeah, I agree. Full is usually how I like to string. Okay, so we've done both coats. I think I'm gonna be good with that because we're gonna add some design to that. I just want it to dry. All right, and we're going to finish this out. So let's put a little more string. Again, I just want this to be consistent all the way through. So I don't want big gaps anywhere. I don't want a whole lot of string on this side and not enough string here. Yeah, I agree, Sharon. So I'm gonna just keep stringing, making sure that I'm filling in any of the gaps until it's, and making sure also that it's consistent all the way through. So that's just the main thing is consistency as far as the fullness of the heart. All right, and I tend to do this really fast. So I'm trying to slow down so you can see. All right, so all the spaces we're gonna fill in. So what projects are y'all doing today? We, um, who's next? I think Samantha is after me doing that adorable reversible, um, gnome wood cutout kit, right? Isn't it, um, St. Patrick's on one side and Valentine's on the other? That's going to be super cute. I like gnomes. I really like Erica's gnomes too. We um 
when I first started crafting. I wasn't a fan of gnomes. I don't know why. But man, they have grown on me. And now I just love how you can do gnomes for literally every, um, you know, every holiday. So lots of fun. Okay, so what do you think? Are we getting there? Is it better? Think it needs more? Think it's good? So just the more I wrap, the fuller it gets. I'm just trying to keep it consistent all the way through. So you're doing the gnomes, the heart, the play and the beads. Yeah, those are so fun. Love the beads if you um, do the tear trays. Those are great it's for um, tear tray fillers. So we do send beads sometimes in our tray kits. <clears throat> so that one's gonna be cute. I like her patterned beads. All right, I think that we're probably good. Yeah, it's looking brighter. Yeah, so the more string that you put on it, the brighter it gets, the fuller it gets. And of course, um, you know, the wood is a lot less visible now, so I think that's why it, it pops. You don't see the wood through it. So more string. Just make sure you're staying inside your shape. You shouldn't have any string right here across that divide or so so to speak all right the other thing that you can do to make it look a little fuller is um <laughs> it wouldn't take you all day you might be slower the first or second time but eventually you just whip right through it without even thinking about it and um i'm actually trying to go a lot slower than usual so um, but yeah, when I'm doing orders or by myself, it's just, it just, you just whip them out, you know, don't even think about it. So another thing you can do to make this look fuller is to put a border around the outside. And the way we do that is just kind of zigzag our way around. So just in and out, in and out all the way around the heart. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go all the way around to where I started. So I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. And then when I get where I started, I'm going to reverse and go the other way. And I'm going to zigzag the opposite direction that I did the first time. And that is going to fill in the edges more so we don't have those gaps between the nails. So you should have what looks like um, a figure eight or an X shape between each of the two nails if you do a border. That is totally optional. Um, you do not have to do a border. It just helps fill in those edges. So see, it looks fuller around the outside. Now, once you get done, it's finished the way you like it, you're gonna do a double knot. So the way I like to do it is take it, I loop the string around my fingers, twist it, and then pull over the nail. And I do that twice. So loop, twist, and pull. Or you can just do a regular, um, you know, a regular double knot. So that knot actually was taught to me by my husband because he grew up doing, um, making fishing lures. And um, he showed that to me when I first started string art. And I was like, I have no idea how you did that. And now I use it all the time. So I'm putting a little super glue right there on the knot again because I don't want my string to unravel. And I'm just going to cut that off. And there we go. What? Only one day. Um, what did I say? <laughs> I don't know. What is that referring to? I, I don't. There's no telling what I said. Okay. So, um, what are we going to do to these? So, on the example, we did stripes, polka dots, and little dashes. So we can stick to that. I'm just going to get a um, small liner brush. To do the dashes, I'm going to do red on um, on the pink V. So I'm just going to take a pointed, a small pointed brush, and I'm just going to dash all the way around as like a border. Okay, and we could do this um, with white. You do it with black. 
whatever color you want. I may go back and add a little white to make it pop because it's kind of blending. Alright, so after we um, get the details on, we'll do a outline, which I'll probably use my Posca paint pens for. Does anybody use Posca paint pens? They're magic. I'm positive. They're magic. They're my favorite. So paint pens are great for um, these little fine details or outlining. Alright, so there's the dashes. It's really hard to see, right? I can't even see it in the camera. So I'm going to get a little white and go back inside of that so that it shows up better. Alright, on the L, Kylie, thank you. Are we doing polka dots or leopard spots? What are we going to do on the L? So basically this is just the reverse of the example board. We did um, pinks on the heart and V instead of red and then we did the opposite. Okay, so here, I think here I'm going to do the stripes. So I'm going to start with the pink. I'm going to go angled and I'm just going to draw from one side to the other with my paintbrush. I'm going to skip a space so that I can do white in between polka dot okay so we'll stick with the polka dots and I'm gonna um, give you a couple different ways to do them all right these we're just drawing angled lines all the way down you want to space them and um, pretty uh, pretty same distance apart about the same distance apart so here on this one what I want to do is imagine this one coming down into the middle part of the E and just continue that line. So we want them to line up all the way down that letter. Let's see. I mean it load the brush. I'm just using a small pointed brush, nothing fancy. All right, again, we want to bring these lines down to the bottom part of the E. Okay, and then we're going to go back between that with white or whatever color you want. So just straight white and I'm going to go right in between all of the other stripes. So I'll start right here. They do not have to be perfect. Okay, this is fun art, not fine art. We are not doing fine art. You don't need to have perfectly straight lines. This is um, just something fun. You don't want to get too caught up in specifics or perfection because we are not here for perfection. Oh, what time is that? I didn't even watch the time. We're good, right? Whoop, that one got a little crooked, see? Hey, Stephanie, how are you? Didn't know you were in the group. Are you doing any of the crafts today? There's so many fun ones to choose from. I want to sit down and do them all myself. All right, almost done with the E. We'll do an outline once we're completely finished and I'll probably use my paint pen, but you can use a liner brush just like the one I'm using now. Um, all right, for polka dots. So you can do this a couple different ways. You can just use a straight paintbrush and draw circles. Um, you can Use a dime and a pencil and trace your circles if you do want them to be um, pretty even. 
or you could do um, this. So I have this little bitty round sponge and I'm gonna show you how I do polka dots with the sponges. Hey Elizabeth, Boston area, huh? Oh yeah, I, I love string art, it's my favorite. Uh, a lot of people say that. I hear a lot of people say, oh I haven't done that in years. So um, it is kind of an older craft that's come back around and it's just one of my favorites. So hey Susan, thank you. Are you gonna make this Susan? All right, I think I'm gonna use white polka dots. So what I'm gonna do, I'll show you. I take my sponge and I'm gonna dip it into my white paint. Okay, so see how sloppy that is? There's a lot of paint on that. I don't want all that paint. Okay, I'm gonna dab it off. So I just want like an even, a even coat. Nothing super heavy, not a lot of paint. And what I'm gonna do is come over here to my L and I'm gonna push it down, twist a little bit and pull up, okay? So you do not have to use a sponge. You can just use a regular paintbrush if you want, just draw polka dots on or you can trace a dime. I like to use coins sometimes if I want perfect, um, you know, perfect circles. Oh yeah, supplies. Um, so you can get, most of this you can get at Walmart. I actually think that they have um, red, white, and black of this crochet thread and I know they have the nails. So most of this you can get at um, Walmart. Now when I'm doing polka dots, I like to think of it as a triangle. So we have this one. I wanna imagine a triangle and that's gonna help me space, evenly space my um, circles. So I'm gonna kind of do a half circle here, okay, because I'm imagining this triangle, okay? I'm gonna do another half circle, a bigger half circle here. So you can use the sponge or a paintbrush. You can use a paint pen. All right, so from here, let's imagine that triangle right there. I'm gonna do the sponge for that. Yeah, aren't they great? All the crafts today is so fun. I really just leave it on all day and just watch um, everybody be so creative. It's so fun. All right, so another triangle. We'll do, I'm gonna do like a three quarter here. Okay, so right in the curve of that L. And again, there's no right or wrong here. You just do you. picking up some some paint I'm left handed any other left handers here so I literally drag my left hand through everything I create paint draw um I, that's why I think that's why I'm always so messy anytime I'm I'm painting or crafting all right and then let's imagine triangle here so we have a lot of half circles that's okay you want it to look like it's going off of the letter I'm gonna do a little one right here because that space is bothering me, it's too empty. So do a little half circle here. Um, Lee, I think those might have been from Amazon, but Walmart has those too. So you can get those, um, actually those might have come from Walmart. I think they have little packs with three different sizes in them. Is that right? Is anybody, can anybody confirm that? That's where I think I picked them up, but I get stuff from all over, so I'm not sure. I know they have sponges on the sticks like that. Um, I'm thinking they come in three different sizes in a bag, but I may be wrong on that. All right, so we're almost done with the dots. And I've just stuck with my um, triangle. So just imagine triangles all the way down. It just helps with um, spacing. That's it. They, they really, however you want it to be, okay? So we're going to outline and we'll pretty much be done, but I still think that this needs a little something to help it pop. Okay, yeah, so Walmart has those. They come, um, a, 
purple, green, and maybe blue. So are the three different sizes and they're, they're color coded. So I'm just gonna go around here with white as well. Make it stand out a little bit more. So I feel like the red is blending right into the pink. Then we'll do some um, black outline and we'll be done. So. And then it will be time for um, Samantha from Maddie Mo Makery. We'll be painting gnomes. All right, so I'm gonna show you this Posca pen. These are the magic that I speak of. Does anybody have Posca or used Posca before? I may be disappointed because I took these to a class earlier this week and then I left them in my car. So they were really cold when I went to get them. So we'll see if they work. All right. Um, so if you like this paint and string, you would love our Holy Creatives membership. So if this is something that you enjoyed, um, we give templates for commercial use on paint and string, um, and we teach creative business inside of that Holy Creatives membership. We left it open this weekend for this event, so it will be closed after this weekend, but you can get the information on signing up at holyrustic.com. Um, we also sell just single kits of different paint and string designs, so you can check that out on our website as well. So this is the Posca Magic, all right? You can use just a um, liner brush to do the outlines, um, but it is a, it's much nicer with these amazing paint pens. So these you cannot get at Walmart, right? They, do, they sell Sharpie, which is okay. Um, but it does not beat Posca. I get mine on Amazon. You just want to make sure that they are actually Posca and not some kind of knockoff. All right, I'm just doing a quick black outline of each letter. Yeah, so y'all know they love the pins too. This is good stuff here. All right, and then we'll just do the L. I'm still on time, right? All right. Back in there. Just threw my whole tip out of the marker. Yeah, they have them at the craft stores, I think. Um, we have a small like local craft store called Ben Franklin's and I go there a lot so I'm not as familiar with what Michaels and Hobby Lobby has all right what else does it need anything think it's good I think I like the the pink heart better than the red so I like the reverse colors here I may put a little bit of um, detail inside. Let me just do some little arches. Not arches, little half circles here. All right. I think we're done, y'all. What do you think? Y'all definitely um, need to try this if you haven't already and let me know how you like string art because it is, um, like I said, I've said a million times, it's my favorite. Thank you, Elizabeth. And um, I just, I really don't know a lot of people that do string art. I know lots of uh, very talented painters, but no one that does string art. So I love sharing it with people and um, seeing their creations and hearing how you like it. So. Make sure you try it and post in the group. Let us see what you what you come up with. All right. So, like I said, I think my time is done. You have about 10 minutes and grab you a snack, and then you come back um, with our next presenter, um, Samantha. Thank you all for joining me. It was nice chatting, and I'll see you later. Bye.